So what is up guys, you got your boy Jet the Stinger here today, and today, 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 we are back with some Reverse 1999 content here today, and today, we're going to be making a, a video talking about the uh, best teams for Tuesday. So we're going to talk about some really good teams that are going to run for, for the current patch, which is patch 2.1. She does release as of the 5th of December, so if you guys want to hear some good teams, I got you guys covered for some fun, some pretty interesting, and some otherwise meta teams that you can run with Tuesday, of course, we'll be also talking about some future teams that she can also run, and we're talking about what's the synergy between them. But anyway, without further ado, let's get started. Let's talk about some teams for Tuesday. All right, so this is going to be the first team here today, and this is going to be kind of an old uh, Jessica offense team. This is kind of just a team just kind of revisiting the uh, patch 1.2 meta team and kind of just revising it with more up-to-date units. If you guys remember back in patch 1.2, Poison was considerably really good because we had Jessica, who at the time was a very strong plant-based DPS. We had Soul to be, which at the time was still a somewhat okay sustain. And then we had just gotten Two Fairy, which of course catapulted the team to success because of her ability to have great healing and of course critical reduction with a uh, critical defense down with uh, confusion and stuff like that. So, but now we've gotten obviously newer and better units, and this is kind of what the core of the team would look like. Now, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a pro tip from me if you're ever looking to use Tuesday which you know some people call her Isode number two because of similar design and same element but I'm gonna give you guys a <laughs> insider here run her with Isode almost all the time now you're probably wondering why well Isode has a bit of a special effect because of one underlying issue here so if you really want the fastest way to accelerate poison, you want not only just Tuesday to be putting up the poison, but Tuesday can put up a huge amount of stacks of poison, there's nothing more better than putting up anywhere between 5 to 6 stacks in a single turn and then just letting it run its course. This is kind of what this core team is going to be about. Now you guys already know that Jessica with her inheritances every uh, even number turn, she can put up a stack of poison and she can also poison on ult. But how is that going to be accelerating our poison to 5 to 6 stacks per round? Now, I'm going to introduce you to what Isolde does. If you're not familiar, Isolde has the ability to give every run, every single turn, pre-ignition, which can give everyone the ability to put up 3 stacks of burn. Why does this particularly matter here? Well, Tuesday's special effect, which is called Fear Cradle, it is a specialized effect that allows a ally to have a 50% chance to put up a poison whenever they put up a negative status or a negative effect on an enemy. So if they ever try to debuff or you put up a negative status or anything like that, you have a then 50% chance to also implant a stack of poison, which not a lot of characters that you can do when you look at the main DPS role. When you're looking at a main DPS role, there's not too many characters in the game that come equipped with a debuff. Jessica technically only gets it from ult, which is the only way she can really implant it, of course, inheritances, but that's um, not on her skills. The only actual skill she can use that inflicts a debuff is ultimate. But Spahulti is also another unit that can because she can also play because she's also giving herself stacks of pre-ignition because you always buff with her first, then you attack. But as for the other units like Lucy, like Ju, you know, like um like Winsong, like Marcus, you know, and so on and so forth, don't really have good ways to implant a debuff of their own. They just strictly don't have it. They're just straight up offense. And with you running Isolde in the team, this pretty much means that every DPS that you could potentially run with this team outside of this specific theme can have an ability to put up poison, which is again going to be great because that gives you more opportunities to utilize the extra effect of the poison, which has the ability to now do critical damage because of Tuesday's effect. And it's just also going to really help chipping down those bosses, which is what you want most importantly. Now, I chose Jessica because I'm kind of am just looking to just revive the um, the new potential team of what it could be. However, however, this team could also very well become a meta thing in patch 2.4. If you guys didn't hear the news in patch 2.4, Jessica's actually getting buffed. So she could potentially be able to spearhead this team's success. Now, obviously, I don't think that we will be running Vila anymore. 
or uh, or Isolde on their own, I think you will probably be running some of the other units that I'll be talking about in Euphoria and when I talk about the new future stuff. But if you really wanted to kind of just run an old team with Jessica Buffs, this team could very well still work. You still have Isolde who does other things outside of just helping with the poison, which I'll talk about in just a second. But and then you have Vila who's also very well for giving critical uh, critical rate, critical damage, which is always a fantastic thing and of course modifier buff which is really good for Jessica's case because of one of her main attacks which is white blanky but anyway let's go ahead and talk about what this team is specifically about so again we chose Jessica because we're kind of fitting the mold of the patch 1.2 team when Jessica was the meta pick here but uh, one of the be best things about this is the ability to potentially max out white blanky so white blanky is her strong single target skill that can actually get a lot of modifiers put onto it because you could put anywhere up to 200% extra damage on this attack if you have up to two stacks of poison. Because you can see right here, it says 450% reality damage. If the target is inflicted with poison, you can deal up to 100% one, well, up to 100% extra reality damage. And for each additional stack of poison afterwards, deals 50% more reality damage up to a max of 100%. Now, this is of course up to the, up to the three star version. Of course, you can get higher variances uh, because of Vila's buff. But the really cool thing about this is you're going to have more than two stacks easily because you're going to get so many just off of everybody actively attacking the boss except for Vila because she doesn't do any actual damage. But everyone that's going to be able to use a type of offensive skill is going to be able to put up stacks of poison potentially. Of course, Tuesday has guaranteed ways to put up poison because of her skill kit. So you're going to have the ability to easily max out this multiplier to make it hit as hard as it possibly can. So you can do some pretty decent single target numbers. Of course, her other skill still does also get extra damage when they're in the negative or control status or status down. Of course, poison is considered as a negative status and so is burn. So you're going to be able to get that little bit of extra uh, reality damage there. So that's really cool there. Of course, if you're running this, always run Blasphemer with Jessica because you're going to have the two negative statuses 100% of the time because Jessica already manually puts up a stack on her own. And then, of course, with the Soul Day, she's already giving you the three stacks of pre-ignition. So as soon as those burn stacks go up, Blasphemer comes online, giving Jessica an extra damage boost, which is always good. And of course, Vila is going to be our modifier buffer. Of course, she can give you up to 200% on three-star skills. If we just start with White Blanky, you can hit some really, really high numbers, of course, giving her the additional crit rate, crit damage. Also, another really cool thing I wanted to talk about with Isolde and Jessica is that they actually synergize very, very well outside of the whole poison burn gimmick. Uh, because Tuesday has an ability to lower critical resistance and have enemies taking 30% more Genesis damage, and Isolde can lower critical resistance, I mean critical defense, my bad. So Tuesday can lower critical resistance, and Isolde can lower critical defense, which is actually pretty sick. And then you have another unit right here who's getting buff up critical damage and, uh, and stuff like that, and... Yeah, you got a crit rate, crit damage buffer, you got somebody who can reduce resistance, and you got somebody who can reduce defense. And that's a really, really good way to help shred through enemies so that Jessica can hit actually harder. So you can actually build Jessica for crit, and then you can just use the other two units to go off and do their synergies as they are attending to do. But that's kind of just what this core team is about. It's just an old revisioning of the of the meta team with more common, well not really common, but more newer units into this into the spiel. So yeah. Let's get right into it with the next team. Alright, so now we're going to be talking about the second team here today. And this is going to be a team that's focusing around Jay and Tuesday. Now, Jay and Tuesday is a pretty fun and cracked combo if you play our cards just right. Now, the big reason why Jay and Tuesday is a very, very good combo is because of Jay's own repost. If you guys don't know, Jay has an AoE based repost effect whenever an ally is attacked by a shield. You guys saw that he has a skill that allows him to put up a shield. This is a very skill right here. So whenever he puts up this shield and every single time he can attack, uh, every single time he can then counterattack if an enemy is affected, which of course he counterattacks with tempering, right? So... How is this going to be a dummy combo as I'm proudly trying to make this out to be? Now, remember the whole condition trigger for Fear Cradle. Fear Cradle has an additional condition effect of whenever you inflict a negative status or a status down effect, you have a 50% chance to put up a stack of poison. 
Since you're counterattacking with tempering, that's putting up two stacks of burn, which is effectively counting it as a negative status, which means every single time Jay repost with his tempering effect, he's going to be essentially having the opportunity to put up a stack of poison as well. And that is what this whole core concept is about. It's about just spreading as much stacks of poison as you can and just letting it go crazy off the Genesis damage. One thing I didn't really get to talk too much about with uh, Tuesday is just how much uh, critical damage you can stack with the poison effect, which is actually quite a bit, you know, especially in certain runs. And, of course, with her special array field, which doesn't let poison stacks drop. So basically, whenever she's in her array field for three turns, poison duration doesn't drop. So if you have the maximum seven stacks, because you have to count it stack for burn, so you can have a max stack of seven. So seven stacks of burn over the course of the array field being active, you're gonna get a lot of damage over time. It's just gonna be just click, 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 click. And this is gonna deal a lot, a lot of damage over time. In that regard, also, um, two they can deal some quite considerable damage if you really do just play the cards right. If you play the cards just right, two they can most definitely put up some pretty pretty good numbers another really cool thing here too is going to be the combination of Vila and this team if you wanted to drop someone like Kakania I think Kakania is better because the whole core between Isolde and Jade really does help with burn stacking to get its to its potential max which is 30 stacks I do think that's way more valid than running Kakania because you only ever need one sustain in a team unless you're doing something that's really really difficult like certain raid fights but if you run Vila here, you can pair her up with Tuesday because Tuesday is actually a mental damaging dealing unit as well. So this also means that Tuesday can take full effect of Vila's buffs to become a sort of sub DPS or sort of main DPS role that's relying on an extra damage from ult. You can also make her skills catapult to more damage because of the Song of Generosity. So, I mean, or the Song of Passion, so to speak, which is the improved version. So, you can really get some potential good damage if you really wanted to. I just prefer Kakania because this team kind of just goes into this all Genesis, really, because, you know, Kakania has Genesis damage off of her Empathy effect. So, you know, the higher her Empathy, the stronger Genesis damage that she can do. Of course, that means she has a stronger ultimate as a result. So, there's, a, there's some really cool things that you can do with this type of team. But this team is pretty simple, straight to the point, is you just shield up with Jay. And you do whatever turns you. Of course, you can spread the poison with Tuesday. You shield up with Jay. You can debuff with the Soul Day if you'd like. Soulless to, you know, whoever with um with Kakania. And then you just let the enemies attack. And then Jay's going to do his thing by counterattacking. And then Ness is going to put up stack after stack after stack after stack, potentially, especially on good RNG. And then you just start letting the Genesis damage do its thing from there. There's not really too much of a deep complexity with this team. It's only just if you really wanted to turn uh, Tuesday into a DPS, then you just run Vila instead. Because again, Vila can give her the full extent of her buff, which is the 30% the crit rate, the 40% critical damage, and of course the up to 200% damage multiplier because of her special song. So that is a really, really good thing there, of course. Uh, outside of J and Tuesday as a formidable synergy, of course, we already have Isolde's extra buffs as well, the 25% power burst that she can give. Also, uh, Vila can do this too on her buff, but uh, Tuesday can do it too, so they stack up together in that regard. And then, of course, you have the 50% coming from the Rise and Route on Ultimate. So they're, 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 there's obviously a great synergy in that type of team there. Kania is good because obviously she can still act as a sustain. She can heal herself. She puts up great Genesis numbers. But again, if you really, really just wanted to run Vila, then you can. Now, the problem with running Vila is that Jay's own damage won't be as high because obviously his damage gets stronger as his HP gets lower. So if you don't want to sacrifice Jay damage potentially, then you can just keep Kakania instead and just let... um him drop down the load and you have at least you know extra potential damage in there but without running a healer this team can sometimes feel like it's kill or be killed which again it's going to take a while for you to die all things considered because you have Kakania and Kakania can heal herself quite a bit quite healthily so yeah there, there, there's not really too much of a dire issue with running a team like this if uh, in most forms of content 
you just kind of had to be aware of what the fight is and what it's about. If it's a team that's, you know, that's hitting you really, really hard, then it gets it gets kind of hard for Kakania to do her main job, which is, of course, keeping your team from dying. So, but if it's something that's not really that difficult, then this team should be able to easily prosper and you can really make for some fun, hilarious stacking of poison. Alright, so we're going to be talking about the team now with Euphoria's in the mix. So we're going to be talking about Sotheby because Sotheby got her Euphoria and she is actually a really, really good candidate for Poison teams all over again. And let's talk about what she does. So one of the best things she got was increased poison damage. So for every 100 of her attack, she gives you 2% extra damage at a starting rate of 2%. So 2% and for every 100 onwards, you get an additional 2%. So basically, it's 2 times the amount of 100. So looking at mine, mine is at 16, 14 attack, right? So if I were to run this, then I go 2 times 16, which is 32. So that's giving me 32% extra poison damage, which is going to be really, really good, which is really nice. Also, Sotheby now gives you... A a huge amount of healing which is going to be fantastic for Kakania. One of her additional buffs is that she can now stack her cure based effects. So whenever you put up a stack of cure she also has the ability to automatically put it up if she falls at 40% of 40% uh, of her own HP is that she can now stack them and they all have their own individual timer so you can just stack them up and just have a bunch of healing. This is again going to be really really nice for Kakania because that's going to be allowing her just to reflect some of that as Genesis damage to the enemy, which is again extra damage that you can provide, which is again very very good. So there's that. Also with her effect, she also has a new effect called Concentrated Essence, which basically means she can spread more poison more effectively. I think she can cast up to about four individual stacks of poison, which is one use of her skill with with, with uh, the Concentrated Essence and the, uh, the effect of the poison. So that's potentially four stacks of poison being stacked up on the enemy, which is kind of the exact same thing that we were talking about with the J uh, Tuesday comp. We're just giving you a bunch of poison just straight out of the bat, which is really, really good. And you only ever need a one-star cast of this. You don't really need to go super above and beyond. But we're going to be talking about the next unit, which is going to be an unreleased unit. But that's going to be for Willow. Willow is going to be a part of the 2.3 patch, which is the same time that Sotheby gets her Euphoria buff. And Willow is going to be a unit that can utilize Sotheby's special antidote cube, her Morningful Face. What this cube does is it gives you a 40% damage boost to poison if it's at a 5. And since you do get creeds fairly consistent, uh, you get you get greed pretty consistently. So all you really need to do is play the game and you can get yourself some greed. And you don't really need to A5 a lot of the cubes out there. There's still some that's really good, especially some of the newer ones that's coming out. But... Uh, there's a fair amount of A5 cubes that you can potentially want to take, and her Morningful Face is definitely one for this type of team, just to get that extra Genesis damage. I mean, not the extra, the extra poison damage. But if you did miss this cube, unfortunately, there is no way for you to get her Morningful Face unless the developers decide to start allowing you to pre or to repurchase uh, the five star antidote cubes because you just can't get them from their story anymore You have to do it through the little milestone little, you know thing that you have to check back every few hours to do so It's a little unfortunate It's a little annoying all things considered because those are some really good cubes and if you're not paying attention You can miss out on some really good ones, but Yeah, but I won't spoil too much of what Willow wants to do because I'll save it for the 2.4 video But chances are you're probably going to be running with Willow as well or there's another alternative option which we're going to be talking about which is Jessica. Now we don't know what Jessica is going to be getting but she is again going to be buffed in patch 2.4. So we don't know what she's going to get yet just yet because the buffs have not been made public yet. They probably will go live probably you know at the probably at the uh, beginning of the patch and then we'll see what she gets and then we can probably make a video talking about that but ultimately speaking that's basically what it's going to be for right now. Is you run Willow, you run Sotheby for her great poison synergy, you run Kagania as your sustain, 
and you run Tuesday, and then that's just kind of just the team. It's not really too much advanced thinking. Again, it's very much the same exact concept that you run with other previous teams. It's just getting up as much poison as you could possibly net. I mean, it's just so much more. This one has, of course, the effectively max range of poison because you don't have any other statuses botching it down, like running it with J and burn. So you can effectively just put eight stacks on everyone and kind of fun you know hags bane which is below special buff effectively is a poison stack so it's kind of the same so yeah it, it, it's it's a lot but anyway that's gonna be it for this video i hope you guys did enjoy uh these are the teams i have in mind for tuesday let me know what you guys think about tuesday what teams are you going to be running with tuesday and until then i'll see you guys next time peace